welcome everyone to Films of the Women in My Life. My name is Brennan, and joining me tonight is Jess. Hey everyone. Just me and Jess, which means it's a horror film. That's right. It's... <laughs> there, there is a good chance that if it's just us two, it is a very scary movie. Yeah, that's right. It means Nicole couldn't be bothered to go to the theaters, and Mama Kay, just, it's not going to happen. It's a chicken. Isn't she's she's a cowardly? It lives inside. It lives inside. This is and I was watching even when I watch this, I'm like, this is a PG thirteen horror movie. I'm like, she's a grown ass woman. Why would she be so scared of this? Like, I know this like jump scares or whatever, but like, whatever. We'll get into it. It lives inside. <laughs> uh, new horror film. Uh, I I saw this on in theaters, but passed over it. And then you said, hey, why don't we do it? Because I'm guessing you happened to have saw it. And then I was like, hey, yeah, opportunity. So I I. <laughs> Knew about it back to for a while, because I think I remember the previews. And it's from the makers oh. of Get Out. So I feel like every movie that says the makers of Get Out, I'm like, yeah, that's on the list. It's just they do the, um, what is it, the producers. Is it Blumhouse? Because I was looking at the the director. Writer-director is Bichal Duta, who is a guy who does a bunch of short films, I guess. Like, like writes and directs short films. I haven't seen any of them. But they're very, like, popular and, like, they, it's like a cult classic for niche kind of thing um but yeah the producers i think are the get out people so a classic um yeah so that, that was that was how you came across did you did you just uh see this just you were interested in this one yeah no i i did want to see it and it's halloween so all the scary movies are out i think the exorcism is probably playing uh oh uh, yeah the original one is and then they had the yeah, new I one too Exorcist I know, Believer. I saw that. So I, I do want I did want to see a scary movies, that's why I saw this. Um but yeah, it's been on my list. Desperate to fit in at school, Sam rejects her East Indian culture and family to be like everyone else. However, when a mythological demonic spirit latches onto her former best friend, she must come to terms with her heritage to defeat it. This has a 61% with the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, a 49 with the audience, a 5.6 on IMDb. That's kind of mixed. That's pretty... I feel like when I saw it, it was at 75 Oh, so yeah, it's it's come it's down. Dropped, yeah. Okay, interesting. We'll have to the audience and the the critics, or do you do you remember? I think it was Ron Tomatoes was at seventy five. Mm, interesting. I remember okay. it was in the seventies. Yeah, we're at the we're at that middle that middle of the not like it's fresh, but it's not like certified fresh, and uh, it's got it's got not actors I really am super familiar with. Around ninety minutes in theaters, as we said. So if you haven't seen have any interest that's where you go because we're gonna spoil it here now so small little cast here be pretty easy to keep together sam is an american high school student of indian origin uh, and she's assimilating uh, at the school and she likes uh to favor like western white culture i guess in quotations uh and she's slowly growing away from her uh fellow indian student tamira who is got this jar she carries around all right and we find more <laughs> about the jar and the jar's got some bad stuff going on inside of it and uh you know when the jar breaks one day when there's a little disagreement between the girls well that's that's when things are not really really not good anymore so the thing that's in the jar is the thing that's terrorizing them in the movie it's the monster it's the creature and uh there's metaphors and symbolism and stuff so we can get into those bits but it's a. Uh, it's a it's it's a creature came out of a jar and it feeds on things. It takes the friend. It takes uh, what's her name? It takes Tamira at about the pretty early on. I'd say like the end of the first act, honestly. And yeah. then um, and then yeah, the rest of the movie is really Sam going through different stages. She's got a love interest. She's got a relationship with her parents, mostly her mother, more so. It seems like the is the more complicated one so that's what it lives inside is gonna do and is about so jess what'd you think of it lives inside i thought it was pretty decent for a scary movie that again that's pg-13 i didn't hate it i actually thought it was pretty good um what i think i still think of my head is the growl of the scary creature like that i think they did a really good job at um sound design yeah now I'm getting it mixed with like the other scary movie we watch and make sure I'm getting like this was the right growl for this movie, right? Um, <laughs> Probably. No, I I thought it was interesting. Like I don't think we've seen something like this recently. It wasn't your typical follow her through and see what happens. There's more like like what you like more rules and more of kind of like a religious 
uh, or I, maybe not religious, but a religion sort of parallel to how this creature works. Um, you learn a little about a little bit about the Indian background, and I think it is kind of tied to a, a coming of age movie as well. Yeah, I I liked this more than I thought I was. I didn't know anything about this going. I mean, not nothing. Like I saw it on like the schedule or not on the schedule on the general when I'm going through everything. It didn't get talked about on my on my uh, programs I frequent, but I, I came like br- brushed through, and I I was expecting oh PG thirteen and I started the movie out and it's like. I was like, oh, it's kind of like teeny teeny bopper horror because like that's not really my my bag. Like, uh, it's not really like what I what I can get into. But I like this more than I thought I would as it went through. There's some like weird weird a lot of weird stuff that I took down in the third act where I, I was like, <laughs> like not character motivations questions, uh, and then also <laughs> I think some of the best stuff is in the third act too. There was I like I did kind of feel a little meandering and a, a little like I don't really know what's going on, like what we're what we're doing here. But I will say that like I think a lot of the techniques in this early on, not showing the creature till way later, smart move, like smart move, because like a lot of those scenes are tense early on and it like draws you in all the way to the conclusion. And then it moves to the next scene and it gives you that scare at the end without showing the thing really until the third act. And like, we see it. It's a, we'll talk creature design. I think I'm, I'm like mixed on it. I'm like, it's, it's, it's better than the the unoriginal aliens we saw recently in another movie but yeah. um but it's it's not i, I don't know I'm, I'm still mixed on it i'm mixed on this as a whole but i will say going in with low expectations might have helped and i i think i liked it a little more than i was expecting uh, i wouldn't say it's super jump scary there was never a point where i was extremely scared like a scary movie but i mean it has it's a scary. It is a scary movie. The thing, yeah, I say that what it's good if if this is what you go to scary movies for, and it's not what I like about scary movies. I like a diff. I, there's a different tickling of horror that I like. What I don't like, and what this does well, is when it's very quiet and the characters are like looking around and like, oh, is something gonna happen and like. Like, oh, it's very quiet looking around. And then something doesn't necessarily have to happen, but it just really draws that out for like an extra the long suspense. amount of time. Yeah, it's a, it's just that suspenseful. And like, it's it's because it's, you know, it's it's the pull of a roller coaster going up the hill before the drop, before the jump scare or whatever it's going to be. And that is not what I like in horror. I don't like the ramping roller coasterness of it. I like the 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 behind behind mechanisms tying things together at midsummer's like what I point at like that's the kind of like that's the textbook my kind of horror movie in my head but this like and there I want to discuss rules too here so like rules on this thing you mentioned I, I'm a little I don't fully understand it lives in the jar the creature this thing what, you feed it so the I raw meat ever revealed <laughs> how it got in the jar right that's what I I got. They don't, they, you don't know because the family died beforehand. Right. We don't know what they did to get it in the jar, and I, I accepted that as like, okay, they did something to get it in the jar. What would be nice is be like, they figure out, oh, what did they do to trap it in the jar? Because our ultimate conclusion of what we do, <laughs> what we do to defeat the monster, I think is kind of stupid. But I, bec- I like, I find the film charming. I don't, th- I don't really find it that like interesting or like, like. Um, deep or like like it's not really hitting no. home like because at the end like the end I, I wrote I what was my what did I write I wrote it was my like this is gonna be my letterboxed quippy quote it was uh oh the power of friendship defeats demonic the hedgehog that was my review demonic the hedgehog <laughs> the power yeah the power of friendship because like they're literally in the underground they're in the end like they're in the end like Oh, she's gonna be defeated by Demonic the Hedgehog, and then and then like she grabs the hand, and then she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I can hold on to this this thing and like hold hold it inside me." These are just like I'm just like it's a little I'm like that's kind of like it's kind of like you wrote a story and you got to the end, you're like, mm, I don't really have a great way to end this. I think we could just like hold hands and believe hard enough, and like that will be enough to end the movie, and that's kind of what they did. <laughs> I mean, they they followed the rules. Like they knew that that chant was what they had to do to kill it. It just took them a while to actually get to that part. That is so that, and this is I will say that's the best part of the movie. From from I say like when she sees the teacher and they do the stereotypical. 
I'm seeing things and teacher has to be like, oh, it's nothing. You're crazy. Like they do that scene. But then instead of doing the usual like teacher is not like, oh, I dismiss dismissive. They have the teacher with the timer in the bathroom scene. And then we have the teacher evading in the hallway with the lights. All that stuff intercut with what you're talking about. The um, the setting up of the prayer and, uh, and the offering. Like, I would say that 15, 20 minute chunk, however long it is. Best stuff in the movie. Like that's like I was like this oh, is yeah. like this is cooking. I was I that's what I was and that's why I took all my notes. I was like this is like uh, the all all the best stuff. Wait, when the teachers being chased around at school with with the uh, demon ghost guy? Exactly. Yeah. Basically everything. Oh, yeah. te- like most of the teacher and that actress um, Betty Gabriel, she's in Get Out and uh, a couple other. Th- she's in one of the Unfriended movies. I've seen. She's in all these little horror movie kind of things. She's so. I think she's great in these roles. Like she's great in like these like and not quite anthology but like this is like a i guess a b movie level kind of movie like i I think she's great in these like bit parts um and yeah her her in the with the timer in the bathroom have you ever been in the bathroom with a timer like that i i was one in one recently actually like maybe a couple months ago in a gas station hadn't been one in i don't know decade or so no, no, I don't think so. You never see the timer bathroom. I was just thinking about that. Like that's a thing. Of, like a, they have that. In, like a lot of old. I was like, oh, why does our house have this? I'm like, no, she's in the school. That's right. I'm like that's a uh, that school has a timer bathroom. It's not great, but uh, no, that's I, I love that sequence. That that was a good part. I did I did like that. And again, like you, I like how she didn't just dismiss her and just say you're crazy. She was actually like, okay, I'll I'll come over and check on you, and and then yeah. I wish I do, and I do wish like, and they were doing it well, like they were building up to it well. Where like they're starting the prayer, and the mom's connecting with the daughter. I wrote wrote down to him like (laughs) the mom and the daughter have this contentious relationship, but all of a sudden the the daughter comes home like. I need to summon demons. And she's like, ooh, it's involved with your heritage? Well, I mean, let's summon some <laughs> demons then. Went, oh, they're, oh, they're, so they're, they're, they're Indian <laughs> demons? Oh, well. Then, like, well, then let's get on. Let's, let's get summoning. Like, she's totally into it all of a sudden. It's Speaking so- of her parents, like, I, that was such a poor choice of her parents because she looks nothing like either of her parents. And her dad looks like he's 30. I took that note too. I said, young parents, really young parents. And then I was like, yeah. are we, are we just maybe getting, uh, that's, what, that's what I was thinking. I was like, or maybe we're just, <laughs> maybe we're just like, I, I don't know. Like, what if they're, what if, what, maybe they're supposed to be 42 or 43 and she's, you know, she's a high schooler. She's 16. So that would mean they had her at 27, 26. That's reasonable. I guess so. I mean, the dad, the dad, I think looked like he could be like 30. I don't know. The dad looked really young. The dad looked the young, mom, yeah. I don't I the mom I could agree maybe it's just a young a younger mom but they look also nothing like what the daughter looks like I No no they really I thought I was like is this supposed to be like an adopt like I was confused I was like because they yeah, had the dad looked no, the dad especially I'm like is he in another family like he looks like oh the actress- he didn't come off as a dad he come, he came off kind of like as a cool old, older cousin I didn't even realize he was a dad at first. I thought it was going to be a twist. Like, they did, I think, what I think they did it on purpose. Like, a fake-out twist when he comes home, and he's standing at the door, and they're doing the prayer, and they're, and and you've been led this whole time, like, oh, that creature was destroying the the, the teacher. And uh, he gets home, and you're like, oh, is this maybe related to the demon? Like, is he, is the dad a, a twist reveal? And then he gets stabbed, and you're like, oh, no, he oh, was just... Oh, I didn't, I didn't think that at all. Oh, I, I thought they did it, because, like, they played, they played it where, like, he got home, and the yeah, two yeah. of them were like, whoa, like, oh, what... It- what are you doing here? And he's kind of paused. He's like, "Is everything okay?" Like, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I thought they were playing it like weird, and then, and then the demon comes and attacks. So it's that actress, that actress who played the mom, forty three mm-hmm. years old. 43. She's what? She's forty three years old. Okay, yeah, that's. I feel like she definitely looks good for her age, but I could, I could see her having a high school daughter. It's the dad that looks so young. The dad, Vic Sahay. Let's see. Oh, he's old. I doesn't say how old he is, but he's been in f- movies since the early '90s, so he's got to okay. be older. I mean, they're both in their. Well, 40s. I guess they just both look good for their age. I don't know. I, yeah, they just look. Great. I but I, that's funny. You said that. I thought the same thing. I'm like, I, I was like, either 
people like they're looking real young these days or it's official i am now no longer young <laughs> at all completely fully 100 percent removed from all the youth and i am now in the next tier of age yeah which, now you're like in the parents peers which is true yeah well it, it is what it is you know yeah we started the show we were the daughters and now we're the and now we're the the, the moms hoping the our kids bring demons home so we can connect with them hopefully <laughs> i really did take like i will say like before like there was the whole middle the middle storyline with the boyfriend eh, maybe that place yeah. for somebody it's a little like filler for me like we have to go to the house we have to set that up so we can go back there later with the oh like you you know where did you uh it's been somewhere it'll have been somewhere someone was killed or they, they, they set it up. Like they do set up the rules. Like I like, it's just that their rules are so like bendy and like basic. And it's like, not like, it's not like intricate rules. It's like, we're playing like shoots and ladders kind of rules, which I'm glad we have rules. We do need rules to play shoots and ladders. I just, you know, (laughs) (laughs) like we do, we do need rules to get to A to B. I I agree, but it's, it's definitely not a, it's not an intricate uh, web. But uh, were there any other parts before the end that you wanted to, before we get to the ending parts? Probably when they got in the house and they saw all that shit on the wall, like the drawings and everything. Mm, mm, There's a lot of numbers in this, the the sevens and there's nines at different points. Oh, Yeah, uh, I wish they showed more about that family. Like they just kind of show remnants, but I wish maybe there was flashbacks or more about them. Yeah, they didn't flesh the family out too much. Or maybe, like, I know they talked about them some when they were at, like, the funeral or the service or the prayer. Or the, whatever the thing was for the the prayer for Tamira. Um, yeah. For Tamira. yeah they, they did some of that. And then we swiftly went to the, like, teen romance. and Which, again, is, like, that's okay. It's, it wasn't, like, it wasn't, cr- I didn't find it, like, cringy or bad. I think the acting is pretty solid in this. Like, I don't have any problem with the teen actors. The, the parents were fine. So that's, like, refreshing. Sometimes I watch these things and I'm like, oh, there's some cringe. But I didn't have any of that problems in this. Um, so, that, so that was nice. But, yeah, we get towards the end. And she's back in the house, and she's confronted. She's confronting the creature, and she's she's figured out to save the fr- the friends in the basement of the of the old of the old Indian family's house, right? The one that was like murdered, yeah, like, the older house, yeah. Which all, which again, all makes sense. Like if you were like looking at this from the thousand foot view, like you're like you could like see the end of the movie from the first five minutes, probably. Like you could probably like do the whole like you really honestly from this from the scene she feeds meat to a jar. You're like okay. From there to the end, you can kind of just kind of uh, what is it? Ma- you can mad you could mad lib this film. But well, uh, did you did you see? I didn't see that where the creature would end up. That part I couldn't see coming. So okay, yeah. So and that and this is how it's written on here, and like how it's how it's said. It's like the way that the creature is defeated is that it is gonna it needs a vessel. It's the what? How how do they say the name of this? The Pishat Pishash. Pichach, do you know how to say the pronouns? Uh, I don't remember. It's too long ago. I watched this. Uh, now. The 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 pee demon is uh, <laughs> it's it's it needs to be, it needs like a vessel or a host of some sort. And and Sam f- believes she's like like I'm like strong enough to to hold the spirit. Is that correct? And she, and in the end, it like inhabits her. And now they have to feed her the raw meats. To yeah. So. What do you think of that choice? (laughs) You're right. I I did not see that coming. I don't think she even saw it either, right? Like, maybe she put it together. Oh, she did put it together based on the picture, right? So she had a flashback to the picture. And then she saw, I think, a painting of, like, uh, an animal. I'm not an animal, sorry. A human opening their mouth and then, like, all the things coming out of it. Oh, you're right. Yeah. That's when she was like, oh, shit. Like, I don't have a jar, but... I can use myself. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give the movie credit. I think I'm. I, that's that's my fault. I I'm. I that's me not being a smart enough audience member. And that's the the, the movie told me. It gave me visual clues, and I, I did not. I was a little confused <laughs> on like it telling me the vesselly thing. And it is. You know what? And I will say, I did not see it coming either. And it gives you that nice ending where they're sitting at the dinner table and they're all kind of scared. Like that is that is a nice like we we talk about. Sometimes it's hard to end these teeny bopper horror movies. That's that's pretty good. That's that's a pretty good choice. Yeah, and I love that at the end of the scene, Tamir was like, so, like, how do you feel? And then she's like, <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> I, 
I think it's fine. And the, we, we get the lingering shot at the end where it's like, oh, but is it fine? And uh, I don't know. I guess we're giving us a wiggle room in case we ever want to revisit uh, Sam and Tamira and see what they're doing down the I'd, line. Yeah, I don't know. If I was Sam, I'd be like, listen, I'm, we're, we're going to get rid of this thing. And you're going to just be right next to me with a jar and just transfer it. We're going to transfer it. <laughs> I know. That's why I like that's You're funny, Jess, because you like these horror movies so much, but they do require so much logic. And you are so like, you tend to be pretty logical when you look at these things so when you're like <laughs> i'm just like like the classic like oh like why do people crawl on their hands and knees where they're in horror movies and like oh like like oh don't go in there kind of thing like you just see like the classic <laughs> like you wouldn't fall for those things so it's funny that you enjoy people falling for those things <laughs> <laughs> any other thoughts on it lives inside that's what that, I, I will say title title is uh not the um I, I, I forgot it a couple times. I was like, is, I was like, it lives, it breathes, it's inside, it lives over there. I feel like we're now at a point where there's so many movies. You just have to be more and more creative with these titles, and a lot of the times, it just it, it's kind of a stretch, uh, or it's yeah. just something you remember. I, like that's why I'm thinking like like titles really should be like something like crazy, like grab your attentiony, but like still tied to the movie. It doesn't have to be something completely random, but yeah, well. We'll, we'll we'll explore that thread another day. Do you recommend It Lives Inside, Jess? Yes, I think if you're looking, like me, it's October, spooky season, and you're looking for a movie to watch um, in theaters, especially to give it more of that October feel, I would certainly um, recommend this. Yeah, I, I surprisingly, a little bit surprisingly recommend this, only because one, low expectation's a little bit low, uh, it's like a, it's a pretty soft, easy, like not not hard to watch watch, uh, and I found it just like kind of effortlessly charming. Like I thought everyone was like really kind of giving it their all, and like at no point like in, in movies like this, I get I either cringe or like the the horror-y parts are like that just it's just not my taste, and I just I get bored with it or irritate or irritates me. It's really what it usually does. It usually irritates me, and this movie did not irritate me and charmed me. And horror movies do not charm me very often, so <laughs> I that is that's that's something to tip my hat to. So it's it's too. I also hands. hope we yeah I hope we continue to see this girl too because I I think she did a good job being the protagonist. Megan so Suri, I- who is in oh she was in Missing. She was the friend. I remember her. Oh wait, she was in missing. Yeah, she was the, oh, the friend. friend. So she was a friend that like what party? Like had a party at her house. Yeah, she was like the flaky friend. Like not flaky friend, but she was like the yeah, like the like the party girl. Like yeah, let's go like do fun stuff. Yeah, she was the one who, who they were buying the alcohol yeah. for. I think. Oh well, that's good. So I hope she can t- we can see her to see her. Yeah, I was looking at her credits here. She's got some TV stuff. I I agree. I think I think it's just like a a good. I'm surprised it's getting so much. Oh, I actually, I was going to do this since we are a little, we're a little early. I can do a couple more things here. I was reading, I was reading some of the horrible reviews in this. I was confused. I was like, I don't, I could see being like a two and a half star if you were lukewarm on this, but I don't know why you would hate this. And people are just saying things like, let's see, complete waste of, waste of a movie ticket. The preview is better <laughs> than the film itself. Uh, what else? This movie was the most boring, anticlimactic, least scary movie I have ever seen. Oh my god, these people are... I never post reviews about movies, but I am sitting in the theater right now. I cannot do it. This movie is terrible. So, I I agree that it's not... I didn't feel scared at all watching it. I wasn't... Maybe like you said, a little bit of suspense with the growling and the creature, but it's not like a movie that you're like, oh my god, I, like, I'm about to shit my pants. It's definitely not like that. So if you're expecting that, or that audience member did... um. And that's not what you're going to find in this. Again, I think, honestly, I think it's more coming of age than it is horror. Yeah, I think, remember, um, what was the one we did earlier this year? Talk to me. It was, it's like a little bit, like a couple years before talk to me level. Like if talk to me is good when you're like in your early twenties, this is good if you're, this is good if you're a teenager. Like I think if this, if you're like. Like this is like this is a solid like PG thirteen. This is appropriately everything. Like I think it's I think it's right down the lane it's supposed to be. Like if you want to be yeah. terrified, Exorcist believers coming, and I think that based on that trailer, that looks like if you just want to be ravaged by fucking horrible things in <laughs> visually and audially. Or you, do you you have any interest in that, Jess? Is that anything up your alley or? I don't think I know what you're referring to. I probably the, knew you watched the trailer. The Exorcist, yeah, I watched the Exorcist Believer trailer, and um, 
it's again i i will i will go and see whatever but not it's something i could miss if uh there's other things i'm interested in right now we can we don't <laughs> have to see another one of those two recommends for it lives inside and uh coming up we've got uh there are big oscar things coming up but i think uh uh strikes and everything move things around so i don't want to make any promises when stuff's coming out because schedules oh I've heard, is that writer strike still going on writer strike is done but i think the oh, that's good the so they resolved act- their uh the strike issues. They did, and they they got like good, like for like for the, I think it was mostly favorable on the labor side. Like I think I think writers are getting good, uh, getting a good deal. So I I don't know the details. That's not the kind of show we are. We don't. If you want your Hollywood uh, <laughs> detail, there's many other great podcasts. We are we're we're much more um, uh, b- uh, bozos talking about a specific film for for forty th- uh, twenty to forty hey, whatever. We're female bozos. <laughs> yeah, it's me and female bozos. So if you if you want if you want know me at all, there was an episode we just did. Uh, we just released our last one was just Mama K and Jess. So if you want to completely cut out the men, it's possible. Get the I'm, if you want more of those, that's fine with me. It takes takes another day of things off my plate. So more more women hosting maybe. Uh, things coming up. I already did that. Okay, let's just do regular. If you want to reach out to me for anything, for the show, questions, suggestions, films with women in my life on Facebook, reach out to me on Instagram. I'm Brennan underscore pod host, and you can email the show films with the women at gmail.com. Thanks for being on for It Lives Inside, Jess. Yeah, thanks for having me. Until next time, this is Brennan signing off saying thanks for listening and enjoy your movies. Thanks for listening to Films with the Women in My Life. If you enjoyed being a listener in our life, please rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Keep up with the latest from the show on Instagram at Brennan underscore podhost, on Facebook at Films with the Women in My Life, and on Twitter at Films Women Pod. Finally, you can email the show with questions and suggestions at filmswiththewomen at gmail.com. Original music for the show was created by Ian Burke and Chris Iwanek. Original artwork created by Nicole D'Alessio. This show is produced by Brennan Snyder. Thank you again for listening and enjoy your movies.